Hello and welcome to my brand new YouTube channel, Elevate Music Business. You can follow me over on Instagram at Elevate Music Business and TikTok as well. You can get me over at TikTok, Elevate Music Business. So anyway, today I want to dive in to talking a little bit about YouTube and also a little bit about TikTok as well and ways that you as a musician can actually elevate your career. So stick with me and I'm going to give you some tips, tricks, tools, tactics and techniques in today's podcast. So one of the most important things to do as a musician is to create and curate your brand. You need to be building a brand at all times as a musician. So therefore, that pretty much means that you need to have an image, you need to have colors going on, you need to kind of stand for something. Because if you're standing for everything and you're, you know, pretty generic, then you're not going to stand out. So the main thing to do as a musician is to actually stand out, of course, naturally. So the way to do that is just really try and differentiate yourself to anybody else. I mean, maybe take everybody that's in your industry and just look at what they're doing and what's missing and maybe what you can add to that particular niche or genre or whatnot. So this really entails defining your image, creating consistent content and mainly engaging with your audience. Because as you might know with influencers and whatnot, you have like an Instagram and TikTok, you might like blow up for, you know, a day, a week, a month possibly. But then unless you actually maintain that, you're just going to fall back down through the cracks again. So what you need to do is you need to be consistently building your community, i.e. your fan base and i.e. your engage with your audience. Because at the end of the day, you have these influencers that might have like, say, a million followers but they might have a very little engagement where you might have somebody that has maybe 10,000 followers and they have a ton of engagement. So it's really about not just posting things and leaving them be, posting and ghosting. You really want to be posting and then anytime somebody leaves a comment or a like, you just engage with them, hop into their DM, say thank you so much, I really appreciate your your time and that you liked my my post and uh, just, you know, really kind of try and build that relationship with them. I mean, this does take a little bit of finessing and it does take a little bit of time but if you're serious about elevating your music career then you really really do need to start building that community and it's so important to build that one-on-one personal experience with your fans particularly when you're starting off because you know once you make it big and you have people to manage your social media and you're touring everywhere and you don't have time it's a completely different kettle of fish but up until that fabulous day comes you really do have to curate everything yourself and start from the very bottom and start from scratch and you need to make sure that you are thanking people engaging with people and dming people and not in a spam kind of way. Sending people just random links just doesn't fly because they're just going to be like, what's this? They're not even going to write you back. So literally, you just got to make sure that you're in the comments with them, you're starting that conversation, you're engaging with them, and then therefore, they're going to appreciate that in the long run and they're going to stick with you. Also, by creating a strong brand, you're going to attract more fans because they're going to latch on to what they like about you. They're going to see what's unique, what they can relate to, and just like what they like, whatever that might be. It might be just the, the colors you got going on, what you stand for, it might be the, the, the style or the genre, it might be that your emo stand out by, you know, really experimenting with fashion and, you know, maybe they, they're really into fashion as well. Whatever that might be, you will attract more fans by literally honing down on your brand and therefore standing out. Also, another huge step in building your music career is actually networking. You really need to make sure that you're constantly networking with other artists, with music industry professionals, and with your fans. And with your fans, this is all about, you know, people that might be getting in touch with you, whether it's on TikTok, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's through YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, whatnot. It's just important to keep that engagement going with them and building that relationship and curating that relationship and making sure that you, they know that you're present and you're not just posting and ghosting because if you do that, they don't have any interest. I know I said this already, but it's so, so important. But networking with music industry professionals is a huge thing as well. Um, if you want to head over to my website, elevatemusicbusiness.com, you will see that I've got a, a post. I talk about getting to know music industry professionals through LinkedIn. So literally just hop on LinkedIn. You can find different people there. Reach out to them. Again, you need to build that relationship because they get so many different DMs and people contacting them on an hourly, daily, minute by minute basis that you need to stand out. There's no point in just like getting in touch with them if literally 
And you're just going to be posting and ghosting, sending a link and then that's it, you're gone. You know, you never follow up because it's so, so important to actually follow up. Because if you don't follow up, then you're never going, they might just like forget about you. You might just like fall through the cracks and then it'd be like, oh, I forgot to contact that person, but they're not really going to remember because they get so many people coming into their inbox all the time. So you really want to make sure you're staying at the very top of their inbox or top of their messages. And you want to maybe give them a call and just give them a follow up if you possibly can. Add some another email, but obviously as well, I don't harass them. Like give it a few days, maybe give it like a week or two after you send your initial information across or you contact them initially. And then what you do is you just literally reach out to them and just be like, hey, how's it going? I said this across to you. I'm just wondering if you had a time, if you had the time to look at it and if you've got any questions for me or if there's anything that you would suggest that I should do, or do you have any feedback? Asking for feedback as well is something that is really important because music industry professionals appreciate that. And even if you're looking for a job and you go for an interview, they really appreciate giving you feedback as well because it's all a part of the learning process. You're never going to learn everything completely by yourself and on your own. You do need to have other people's opinions and other people's feedback, be it constructive criticism or be it just constructive or be it just criticism, whatever it is, you can take it and just learn from that because at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to change and you're going to make the same mistakes over and over and that is just completely disheartening not to mention a total waste of time so the best thing to do is if they do reject you or they say we're not interested right now or we don't have space for you in our roster or whatever it might be just go okay no problem thank you so much really appreciate that but could you actually just tell me maybe what you would suggest I should do to promote my music career or promote myself or maybe something with the music that you think that is just not working for the market at the moment or whatever that might be just ask them and you know see what they say back and you know go with that another really important tip is to be informed always stay informed when it comes to the music industry keep on top of things by reading blogs by listening to podcasts by watching youtube videos you can actually sign up to a whole bunch of different music business news i think there's like music business news week and there is a ton of other ones as well not to mention music magazines so there's always information in that about what's actually happening with the music industry you might have something on the lines of someone who's been bought out by somebody else all of that is actually quite relevant to you because let's say for example if you intend and getting signed and maybe your your type of genre is with Sony then if they get bought it by somebody else you want to see what happens with their roster and the the type of the, the genre that you are in and all those artists that are also in your genre that are assigned to Sony like what happens with them is this going to mean for you that it's going to be easier for you to be able to get in touch with them since they're going they're in the middle of acquisition at the moment or is it going to mean that like they're not going to be looking for anybody new all of these little things are important because if they're not looking for anybody new because they're going through an acquisition process then in that case you know just don't waste your time or if they're starting a whole new section and they're starting with like new people you want to be able to find out who those people are and you know if they might be interested in you and if you're interested in your genre um a whole bunch of things i mean you've got like different information coming out about like new ai tools about new music equipment but like new music magazines or maybe even getting in in touch with journalists as well and going back to what i was saying earlier on about networking it's really important actually to make sure that you are networking with journalists because let's say for example i think the best thing to do is like when you know your genre and you've got your image and you've got your brand down know what publications would suit you what blogs would suit you what podcasts would suit you what radio stations would suit you what djs would suit you who plays your music who writes about you who writes about like your 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 genre and artists that are similar to yourself if you know who writes about you and you know what people are interested in your type of in your space what they're what what they're looking for then you can literally i just follow them on social media i find twitter is really good for that i find twitter is really good actually for music industry professionals again like be that even radio djs and uh, journalists so if you were to like just follow them on twitter and just hit the bell notification then you're going to be informed every time they put up a post and if you're informed every time they put up a post then that is fantastic because literally at the end of the day you can just hop on straight away it's like oh got my phone right here perfect well, i'm just gonna you know go on and immediately you can like it you can be the first person to like it and then they're going to like be like all oh, right okay you can engage you can you know make a comment whatever it might be so it is really important because like then if you do that on a regular basis they're going to have you front of mind go oh yeah i've seen you on twitter or whatever so when you're sending them submissions for your music to be played let's say on a radio station and uh, you're getting in touch with that particular DJ, then they're going to be like, oh yeah, like I remember you, I know you. It's building that communication and it's just building 
that rapport with them so you're not just a complete stranger coming out of left field just randomly expect them to play your music you actually have like engaged them online you've built up that you know that that sort of little bit of a, a acquaintance relationship they have an idea who you are it's like oh yeah i've seen you online okay cool do you know um and obviously don't troll them <laughs> either what you want to do is like just you know I mean, I've done it like a load of times as well and I find it really, really works. They might follow me back sometimes if I do it like, you know, a few times over, like which is like literally just, you know, follow a particular DJ and when they and hit the bell notification and when they post, the second they post, it comes up on my phone, I click into it and I'll heart it or make a comment or make a laugh or like an emoji, like a smiling face or whatever. And then like, you know, having done that like a number of times, they then follow me and then they know who, they, who I am. So, you know, that's pretty cool. So that does work and that does kind of help build up that, you know, groundwork from the very bottom to, you know, then maybe eventually writing about you or eventually playing your music. So that is something that's really, really important. So YouTube has literally become an essential part of a musician's journey in their online presence and social media, brand building and getting their music out there to so many different people. I've personally worked with artists where I've actually got them on their very, very, very first single, their number one song, got them millions of views on YouTube. YouTube is so powerful and it's literally one, it's owned by Google. So therefore it's literally whenever somebody was to type in something along the lines of like maybe your genre, the name of your band or whatever, YouTube will come up and getting those views is amazing because also then you can monetize that by literally signing up for AdSense. And the more views you're going to be getting, then the more uh, money you're going to be making in AdSense. So what you can do, and obviously creating a playlist as well is a really good idea. And to do that, you need to have, I think 1000 subscribers and 4000 watch hours in the space of one year and then you can monetize your platform. So it is really important to make sure that you're constantly being consistent with it. So, I mean, whether you're just doing maybe a live recording or maybe you're doing, you could have your own music business podcast. You could have your your, your own podcast as a musician, you know, going through the, navigating the field of the music industry, the woes, the ups and downs and like, the winds and whatnot you could literally just be talking about like how you're getting on in the music industry with a podcast or whatnot you can talk about what inspired you you can just do sort of like your own little diy interview you could get a friend to do an interview with you and i just stage an interview because and that kind of looks like there's people interested in you as well so it looks like there's like any professionals that might be interested in actually interviewing you so you could just get your friend they don't even have to be on camera write a bunch of questions and then sit down and ask your friend to read out the questions to you and then you can answer them to camera and then it's like oh it's it's a nice interview as well what you can do is you can literally do some covers you can record your songs besides as well of course as putting up your official videos for release on youtube as well so the one tip I'm going to mention first is on YouTube is a course, as I mentioned already, defining your niche. That is really, really important because again, you want to stand out and there are so many different people on YouTube. So again, just to re reiterate, find out exactly what your genre is and then you can have a sub genre and a micro genre. And at the very beginning, it's really important to have maybe a micro genre and also as well, you can be tagging people that you think whose music is similar to yours that are maybe more successful so that possibly you might come up in the Google search rankings. So literally the more you hone yourself down at the very beginning, the more you're gonna be talking to and singing for that very one person. And when you're talking to one person, then you're talking to a whole community of people and then you build it from there and it just grows and grows and grows. Whereas if you just wanna to talk to the masses from a teenager to like a 65 year old person, you know, from this country to that country, it's just too all over the place. It's too vague, it's too broad, it's too messy, it's not specific. So what you wanna do is you really wanna define exactly down to the T who you are, who you wanna attract and what you're about. Because if you know what you're about and you tell people I'm about this, then those people are going to start following you. So as well, once you've defined your niche, what you want to do is you want to optimize your channel. Now this can entail come up, coming up with a really creative name, putting some, you know, a lot of detail into the about section about your channel and also doing some search engine optimizations. So when you're putting in the title of each video, make sure it's very specific, you know, so it could be something along the lines of, I don't know, how to cut paper with a scissors. You could say three ways of cutting paper with a scissors with your left hand in 2023. <laughs> That's way more specific. So literally that would be 
more picked up in the search engine optimization because it has a lot of words in it that will be picked up by the algorithm as opposed to something that's too broad. So really being specific with your titles, being specific with your tags and also as well being specific in your about section and the actual name of your channel as well. Number three is consistency. Consistency is key and is the hardest part. I mean, we can all do podcasts, we can all do video, we can all do all of this, but what we can't all do, including myself, is stay consistent. But that is one of my, go- I was gonna say rules, one of my goals for 2023, one of my New Year's resolutions, I'm going to ideally be as consistent as possible. So every week I'm gonna be doing a podcast and a YouTube video and every week I'm going to be putting in content. So that is in itself quite a lot of dedication. And if you can do that, then you're doing well. And that is really and truly the only way you can actually really build your fan base, whether if you're a musician or for me, really building my audience as a podcaster is to make sure that I'm staying consistent. Because if you're not consistent, I mean, even as a consumer might go to, let's say, a YouTube channel or might go to um, a podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And if I start to really enjoy the podcast I'm listening to, but then I realize like that, oh, they, they haven't done a podcast like since 2018 or 2021 or whatever, or like 10 months ago, I kind of get a bit deterred. I'm like, oh, okay, they're, they're, it just for a split second, it kind of comes into your mind, oh, maybe, you know, not as professional or they're not, you know, they're not on it as you would like to think. So it is important to stay consistent just to kind of keep that sort of professionalism up and it it just looks good and you know it's really just about taking yourself out of your comfort zone and just pushing yourself to get these things done on a weekly basis i mean even what you can do as well as you can batch your content to kind of make it easier be it your posts your reels your tiktoks your youtubes your podcasts or whatever so you can literally maybe do one podcast where it's a video and audio and you can put it out there on video and audio and then you can maybe snippet that as well to put up on reels and also to put up on tiktok so you know you can actually just do that maybe once a month by literally just you know using one day once a month be it a monday a sunday whatever day (laughs) suits you and locking yourself into a room and just recording and then editing and then putting that content out over the space of that month so you can just do it once a week so you have like four videos and maybe four tiktoks and they just kind of go out then once a week and that just saves you doing it every single week because the weeks are short and you know life happens in between and so it's not the easiest thing to say to stay consistent unless you really work hard at that and you're on every day but if you just want to batch your content and then schedule it to go out then that kind of gives you a little bit of time to yourself to work on other projects. Again, with YouTube, just as I mentioned with other things like TikTok and with Instagram or whatever, so important to engage with your audience. So again, people are leaving comments in the comment section. People are getting in touch with you. Do engage with them regardless of like whether the comments are negative or positive. Just always be positive in return to the comments because otherwise you're just going to have like some negative, you know, you're going to have, you know, create negativity. You're going to have like a negative presence on there and people might start to, to 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 unsubscribe or you know not watch your 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 channel or whatever so no remain professional and even if somebody has something negative to say just say look i appreciate your feedback thank you so much for your comment and i'll i'll take that on board so that is really important to stay connected with your even if it is negative and on youtube just as much as tiktok or instagram as well also as well use youtube's tools there are a bunch of tools on YouTube. There are TubeBuddy and there is, you know, a few other different things as well that you can add into YouTube for keywords, for analytics, for all of this. So I think TubeBuddy is actually a paid a source, but at the end of the day, it is really beneficial because it does help you with like, say, the title of your video. It helps with your SEO, the tags that you're creating as well. So it does work with you to try and make sure that your video is going to be seen by the audience that you want it to be seen by. So do use YouTube's tools because that is what they're there for and they're really, really beneficial and they really do help because I think there's something like a, a crazy amount of videos, like millions of videos are literally uploaded to YouTube on a daily basis. So you wanna be able to kind of you know stand out and the only way you're gonna stand out is 
by using the tools of YouTube and making sure that your, your tags, your SEO, your metadata, all of that is there and it's all correct and it's all going to help you grow on YouTube. Now, again, don't be deterred if you only get like a few views here and there at the very beginning. It's going to be like that for a while. It does take time, it takes dedication and it takes patience and of course, consistency. So if you're only getting maybe four or five, you know, views at the beginning for maybe the first six months, eight months, doesn't matter, whatever, just keep going because at the end of the day, you will come through because you are the one who's going to stand out if you are consistent as there are so, so, so many people on YouTube that literally just drop off. And so you're going to be the one that's actually going to come through the, the crowd with those that have dropped off at the same time as you started. So it's really, really important to, uh, to make sure you're keeping that consistency up. So now let's move along to TikTok. And here are a few tips and tricks, again, for helping you as a musician to grow on TikTok. Now as well, actually, just going back there with YouTube, that there's there are shorts on YouTube now too, as you're aware. And the short videos are really, really, really good. And you can get a lot of views with the short videos as opposed to the long videos. So as I mentioned as well, just to kind of keep it really simple and easy for you to be able to focus and get this done, you can literally just record a couple of videos or even just one video over in the space of like an hour or two and then edit that video so you have a reel, you got a TikTok and you got a short as well. So you've got all of these and you can and do your podcast and do your video all at the same time. So you can literally just do one piece of content and then use it across all the different platforms. So that is something that kind of does help a lot of people to, you know, keep consistent because if you were doing a podcast, a reel, a TikTok, and you were doing a long video and, you know, it's just, it's all way too much to do all of that. And you would definitely need probably about a week to do all of them separately, including editing and everything else. So you can literally just do one piece of content and then that one piece of content can just go everywhere. So that is one really handy thing as well, just so that keep in mind. So again, with TikTok, just like in everything else, define your niche. This just goes without saying, and this goes across the board. So I won't go into it again, because I think I've mentioned a few times now already, but something that's really, really important is something you need to know, and something you need to remember, something you need to do. Anyway, besides that, what you also need to do is you need to make sure that you are using hashtags in TikTok. So not too many hashtags, but using the right hashtags, particularly in the music industry, can also help you rank on the For You page and, you know, come up other people's feeds. Because that actually just came out there recently that TikTok actually promote their promote videos manually. So it might just be that they might come across and decide to boost you. So it's not necessarily actually due to the algorithm. It is a lot to do with the hashtags as well, because your hashtags will obviously get you found on searches. So literally YouTube. Okay. So Google was like the, you know, biggest search engine in the world. And then YouTube was the biggest search engine in the world because YouTube was owned by Google. But now TikTok has come up to actually be the number one. So TikTok is now used as a search engine more than Google and more than YouTube. So literally, if you put in the right keywords, you know, Amazon made me buy it, they do product references, they do like maybe a kitchen hacks, home hacks, whatever it might be. You can do guitar lessons, singing lessons, you can talk about me, whatever it might be. And so people actually do search for that and you can go through a whole bunch of videos quite quickly and be found there. So the more, you know, niche and honed down and specific your keywords are, the more you're gonna get found on TikTok. So another way to work the YouTube monster that it is, is collaborate. So collaborating with other musicians, maybe literally by, you know, just, you know, duetting with them or by just having, you know, going on their channel and, you know, them going on your channel or whatever it might be. Collaboration is a, is huge. Even actually that might, that goes as well, like for Instagram. So if you were to do a live on Instagram and if, you know, you were to interview somebody else on a live, then their audience is going to be you know, notified and your audience is going to be notified. So it's going to be like, you know, cross audience. So literally they might not know that you exist and vice versa for the person they're interviewing. And so therefore it's just like opening up to a whole new audience. Same thing goes, as I mentioned as well, like for, for YouTube. So if you were to like get a, a YouTube collaborator and work with them in whatever way you feel like, maybe you do a song together, you do an interview together, you do just a random 
video together, whatever it might be, your their audience will discover you and literally it does help to collaborate a lot. So keep that in mind as well. And it's also really good just to kind of build that community with other artists as well. So maybe you could do like a monthly collab, you know, with another artist where you just kind of get together and you just riff or you just jam or whatever it is and you record it. So that would be, you know, something to definitely keep in mind. So again, with TikTok, creating engaging content is huge. So because the videos are so, so short, they're like 15 seconds, 30 seconds, up to three minutes, you want to make sure that you are literally bringing them in from the very get-go. Because if you're not, then they're just gonna scroll. So you know, make sure that what you've got to offer is something that's interesting, intriguing, entertaining. It could be funny, it could be educational, it could be any of the above, it could be comedic, it could be dramatic, it could be whatever. So whatever you have decide to do, just make sure you get them at the very beginning and then therefore they'll stay with you throughout the video. Because obviously that's what you want. It also builds, it generates more interest in the algorithm as well. Even though a lot of the videos are actually boosted manually, it, there, there is algorithmic patterns as well. So <laughs> that will help you in the, in the future. And again, last but not least in TikTok, the last tip I'm going to give you is again to engage with your audience. So literally there are the same things that apply across the board when it comes to all social media and that is getting your niche down, building a brand and engaging with your audience. They are and remaining consistent actually. They're the four top priorities that you need to do as a musician because everything else you can you know work away at but like literally having something that people can recognize immediately which is your brand on a consistent basis which is you just doing it every week or every other day or every couple of weeks whatever that might be and also just engaging with your audience too well that will keep them captivated that will keep them interested that will keep them literally engaged they are the main things that you need to know to literally succeed as a musician on tiktok and youtube and of course that goes for facebook it goes for snapchat it goes for best of luck with getting your career off to a great start this new year on YouTube and TikTok. And if you do have any questions that you want me to answer, do feel free to reach out to me, hello at elevatemusicbusiness.com. And as well, you can send me a DM on Instagram, Elevate Music Business on Instagram. Leave a comment below if this is on YouTube or, you know, get in touch whatever way you can find me. <laughs> so anyway, Thank you so much for tuning in and elevatemusicbusiness.com is the website. It's going to be live pretty soon. And uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. I've also got a free social media guidebook as well, which is going to be on the website pretty soon. So keep an eye out for that and get yours by just like entering your email address and you'll be able to get your free social media guide for musicians. Also, if you're interested in a bit of merch, a cap here as well, actually, which I forgot to put on. So there's like my cap and my hoodie. So check that out as well on elevatemusicbusiness.com. So yeah, let me know if you've got any questions and thank you so much for watching.